So before we get to relatively a light action night of MLS games where there's only going to be free games that's going to be happening tonight, let's do a little news of the week video and just like the fact that tonight there isn't a lot of games going to be happening, there hasn't been a lot of news to talk about for this past week and that remember for the past couple of weeks I've been mentioning numerous of transfer rumors and signings that has happened in the news of the week well this week it's the opposite it feels like the the transfer ru rumor cycle has just kind of took a break this week and that there wasn't as much as rumor and signing as we have seen in the past couple of weeks but one of the biggest transfer that is set to happen is Albert Felice as he is report to close to moving to Bavista FC and if you're wondering have I heard this club before in terms of a player going to that club from an MLS club well the answer is yes you have heard heard of that that news before because last week Reggie Cannon basically made made the official jump of leaving FC Dallas and joining Bavista FC and it seemed like Albert Valise is going to do the same thing now there is no report of exactly how much Bavista FC are going to pay, pay Houston for Albert Valise. I'm assuming it's going to be a hefty price because I'm pretty sure Dynamo fans are not going to be happy. The fact that if the Dynamo, which, you know, we knew that eventually Albert Valise was going to be sold with this club and making the jump to Europe. And it seemed like it is going to be happen in a matter of time. But I'm pretty sure Dynamo fans are not going to be happy if the Dynamo are just going to sell Albert Valise and they're not going to to get a lot of money out of it because he is probably the biggest asset of this club and that this is going to be a player that they can definitely sell him off so that they can really make a lot of money to tr try to continue I wouldn't say a rebuild of this team but kind of more like a re retool that the Dynamo is go going through, through right now although this season judging by the the, the retool that they, they've been doing and how Tat Ramos has, has just been working wonders with this team it seems seems like maybe this was the right time the fact that they of course decided to sell Albert Valise and that there's not going to be a huge dent in terms of the performance that they have this season now moving on in terms of another transfer rumor is the transfer rumor regarding of DeAndre Yetlin so we heard about this rumor uh, last month about the fact that he is linked with another MLS with a bunch of MLS club and it seemed like that rumor is returning again and I think this is probably like the one million time we have heard about this rumor because it's not just last month that we heard about DeAndre Yetlin potentially coming back to MLS we have heard this for the past couple of years and it looked like this was most likely going to be the year that he's gonna return knowing the fact that Newcastle was was in discussion of a huge kind of fi financial tick over by a couple of those Sal Leeds King, obviously that deal didn't didn't went through so that you know now this kind of situation makes it a little bit more difficult the fact that Yetlin might be thinking about staying in Newcastle instead of heading back to MLS but that doesn't stop the fact that there is once again talk about he is going to return to MLS ideally I think think he is going to to return to MLS in these next couple of years but I just feel like maybe he's going going to spend a couple more years in Europe and that see whether or not if things kind of eventually does not work out that he will head back to MLS but I'm also sure that a lot of MLS team doesn't want to wait till that time and that they really want to get their hands hands and try to sign De DeAndre Yetlin and head back to to MLS because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of teams that would really need need the service of DeAndre Yetlin in terms of focusing on some on one of the the position that always tends to be an issue for a lot of MLS team which is the fullback position now Toronto FC have made a signing this week and they I think they were the only team that was able was able to make a signing this week because I don't think any other teams actually made a signing well if you include Gonzalo Higuain as as a signing although that was kind of kind of last week news but this this signing that TFC made was a a Liverpool U23 and Scotland youth international fullback Tony Gallagher now I have a feeling this is a signing that 
in mind for depth pieces in terms of the fullback and maybe a potential replacement for Justin Morrow, who, you know, he's been kind of injury prone for the last couple of months and that he is also getting up to the age where a lot of fullbacks is going to kind of start start falling off the cliff. So clearly they want to add some boots in turn or add some depth pieces in terms of the fullback position and maybe even Tony Goucher is going to be the starting fullback for the team if Justin Morrow is going to continue to struggle in term, terms of injuries or if he's going to start to show signs that yeah he's started to kind of get past past that point and that maybe he's going to start thinking about this might be the time to kind of hang, hang up his boots. Uh, we also had one outgoing transfer that happened this week in MLS and in, involved with FC Dallas striker Zidane Gojonsic have officially returned to Czech Republic and have now signed with Victoria Pilsen. Now, I've heard some FC Dallas fans and some fans are not happy the fact that, that the Cobra is heading back to Czech Republic and they think that he, he kind of kind of is acting kind of like like a traitor the fact that he decided to return to his team and kind of force his way out of FC Dallas but here's the thing the the news basically said the reason why the Cobra wants to head back to Czech Republic is because of family family reason and if you're going to call a player that decided to to be unloyal with a team and become kind of a traitor by for, forcing a transfer move because of family reason yeah you are you, you, I, I think you need to definitely, you need to check, check your mind a little bit because I definitely respect players that that feel like might be a little bit homesick and you know a lot of these foreign players, especially the situation that we are dealing with right now. There's a lot, lot of these foreign players that really wants to get back to their home country to look out for their family, and it seemed like Zdenko Johnson is one of those players that feel like he's a little bit homesick and doesn't want want to be here instead that going back to his native country to take care of his family so he decided to of course make this move and also this move doesn't really hurt FC Dallas in in sense because it feels like Luchi Gonzalez you know how we talk I talk about you know Luchi Gonzalez has a decision now to make whether or not if if he's gonna start the Cobra or the new signing Franco Jara as their starting being striker and it seemed like Shara has been a guy that's been starting for FC Dallas and it seemed like that is pretty much the answer in terms of this competition in the number nine spot so in many ways FC Dallas is is pretty good good the fact that they they of course are are going to still do fine even though they they lose one of their key number nine player during this week now, moving on in terms of the next news, uh, there hasn't been a, any injury report we we have, have heard from this week. But one one injury that I would kind of give you you guys a little bit update is the Sebastian Blanco injury. So we know last week it was definitely unfortunate to see Sebastian Blanco suffer a season-ending end, torn ACL injury, and that he, he of course just undergo surgery this week, and that now. Now they, the Timber says that he is going to be set to miss six months after this ACL surgery, which means that he probably will not be available until maybe near the beginning of next season. And as much as I know that sucks, it sucks the fact that he's not going to be with this team for for the rest of the season and presumably when they go into the CONCACAF Champions League. I really hope the Timbers don't rush him. And it's Especially we've seen before where teams have an important player that has a season ending injury and they kind of rush him him to get back into the starting eleven and that most time or not, that does more harm than actually good to decide to rush the player. Hopefully the Timbers won't just immediately do, does that heading into the beginning of next season. But either way, you know, it's definitely suck to see such a good good player, especially the reigning M. VP of the MLS is back. Terman is not going to be available until at the earliest next March. But I wish him a speedy recovery and hope that he can, of course, get back to the similar level that he was in the MLS's back Terman heading into next year. Now, for the player of the week, uh, I haven't actually talked about player of the week for the past couple 
of weeks and I think some of you might say well why don't you talk about the player of the week anymore since you always mention it in the news of the week well I am going to be bring I am going to bring it back in terms of who exactly won the player of the week and this week the winner of the player of the week awards in MLS was Jordan Morris now you could could argue that you could have gone with a lot of those Seattle Sounders player that was involved with that 7-1 thrashing of the San Jose Earthquakes because of how how good that they were but since Morris play a not only the score a bunch of goals in that game but also play a pivotal role in that 7-1 demolition against the Quakes that's why he gets the odd of winning the player of the week but either way I think if you would have predict who's gonna win player of the week from from the last match we you probably think it's gonna be as a Sounders player with the way that they had just an incredible week week uh the fact that they they just absolutely demolished the quakes in that that game back on thursday and finally the last news i'm going to be talking about is the oakland roots as they have announced that they are going to be set to make the jump to the usl championship next season and this is definitely not a big surprise and in some way i kind of saw this one coming with the way that the roots for the past year and a half when they're in the and i SA they have been leading the league in attendance and they're they're literally averaging right above the average attendance right now in USL and that it was just a mat matter of time before they of course make the jump. Now that being said, I am really kind of surprised of the the way that the Roots has just they're one of these few teams that's kind of started out with nothing and then they kind of kind of built into to this identity that they want to be a community-based kind of club and then the next thing you know not only the fact that we had gone through the the hype level part where the roots were able to gain gain a lot of fans to to support the movement that they they want to believe and want to support this team but it's hard to be believe the fact that this continued support and that that even though when this team were not at at their best last year in their their inaugural NISA season that fans were still attending this game like I remember back in the first game that I, I attend with the Roots when they were playing against Cal United striker for their first ever NISA a game and that there were there were definitely a sold out crowd for that game and that you know I knew that there was going to be a sold out crowd in that game knowing the fact that that since this is the first game for their club and that there was already a lot of hype around this club obviously they're going to sold out their game but my biggest question is that can they actually sustain this and is this just kind of a a product of, of a club that's going through like a honeymoon period and that the hype of course is surrounded and once that hype died down can they of course sustain it well not only the fact that they have been sustaining it but their average attendance just continue to increase in fact that first ever g game against Cal United in their first ever NISA a game that was actually their lowest home attendance they actually continue to increase their their attendance and that there was even I think last year they actually got up to about 5,700 fans attending a game and at that point I realized that yeah not only the fact that it feels like they're they're kind of too good in terms of the attendance wise to be in it in a third division of US soccer but it's clear that they're ready to make the the USL jump and especially over these past couple of months where we have heard about the USL East Bay kind of project and that that kind of started to fell through and that it's not going to happen it seemed like the roots are most likely going to be that team is going to join join USL as part of an expansion that they're going to have a team in the Bay Area and very proud to see that the Roots are going to do that obviously the other the only thing I will say about the Roots is that you know I hope they potentially think about building their own soccer specific stadium I mean I have nothing against Laneley College I think that stadium is decent but the issue that I do have with that stadium is the pitch of that stadium like I know I've attended the two Roots game for the past two years and it seemed like what they do with the pitch is that they decided to kind of put a a artificial soccer pitch on top of of an artificial football pitch that is taking place at Laney College Stadium and it just does not look good 
whatsoever. And then if you're going to do that, why not just put, not just artificial grass pitch, but instead just put a regular grass pitch there if you want to do so. But either way, I hope eventually they have enough investment that they think about building a new stadium. Because even though, you know, that stadium, as I said, is a decent stadium, I still think that stadium might be a little bit too small for them and that I feel feel like if they want to to continue the trend of what a lot of USL championship team is doing which is building their own soccer specific stadium that I think they will follow that trend and that they might think about building their own now the problem is it's not very easy to build a stadium in Oakland in fact if you just ask the A's how their stadium situation is gone you will probably know that it's just as hard to build a stadium in Oakland as it, it is if you think about building a stadium in in New York. But I assuming that eventually they are going to find a way to do so and that I really would love to see them build their own soccer specific stadium and just even enhance more of the fan experience with the way that th this team has gone gone through for the past couple for the past two season ever they since they found it last year. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys leave a like, smash that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of all of these news. And as always, if I didn't include some news that happened this week on my board for the news of the week, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys next time.